Look at all these beautiful salamanders. Large blotched Encetina. I'd always hoped I'd find one of these. Come join us on a trip to the mountains of Arizona to search for the large blotched Encetina. It wasn't too many years ago that I first learned that the large blotch Encetina had been found in the wild in Arizona. Now, Arizona already is native to the Arizona tiger salamander and the Sonoran tiger salamander, but the large blotch Encetina is native to Southern California. So the question is, how did it get here? According to reports, sometime around 1980, 22 large blotched Encetina from the mountains of Southern California, Palomar Mountain, were released illegally in Arizona. Now, several decades later, it's been discovered that this population is now successfully reproducing in the wild in Arizona. The website californiaherbs.com has some excellent information about Encetina, including the large blotched Encetina in California. It shows some of the typical pattern variations that are commonly found in Southern California. You can see on this map, in the dark blue area, the known range of the large blotched Encetina in California. Compared to most other forms of Encetina in California, the range of the large blotched Encetina is fairly limited. The website also has some great information about its natural and life history. Scrolling down further, you can see a larger map that also shows that the large blotched Encetina can be found in parts of northern Baja California, Mexico. Further down, you can see an even more detailed range map that, in addition to showing the different ranges of Encetina, also shows the pictures of the different subspecies. Armed with this information, we decided that we wanted to try this winter to search for the non-native California salamander in Arizona. We arrived at our chosen location late in the afternoon. There wasn't much daylight left. Immediately, we headed towards the creek where we planned to search under rocks and fallen logs. Found one! Jason found our first large blotched Incetina. Take a look at that under this rock. Isn't it beautiful? One interesting thing about these salamanders is that they breathe through their skin rather than through lungs. Because of this, they need to live in damp, humid areas to keep their skin moist. Although in Arizona they live near water, they do not have a life cycle that involves living in the water. Their eggs are laid in a damp place on land and hatch into fully formed salamanders, skipping the water dog stage or the larval stage like some other salamanders. We're gonna go ahead and let this guy go and see if we can find any more. While looking around, we notice that there's still some snow in some of the shaded areas. The air is still quite cool up here. All right, we got the second one. This one almost got away. Does the tail look different on this one? Yeah. It just so turns out that the males of this species have longer and thinner tails while the females shorter and thicker tails. So the first salamander that we found was probably a male, while this one is more likely a female. We found our third Encetina under this rock right here. This was the first that I flipped. The last two were flipped by Jason. This one also looks like it has the shorter and, and fatter tail, so it's more likely a female. And here's a closer look of this one in hand. All in all, we spent probably an hour to an hour and a half searching for the salamanders. We enjoyed the beauty of the area. When we got a final count on the salamanders, I believe that it was nine that we were able to find. Here's a few of them. And then it was time to turn around and head back home. What a great and successful adventure. Don't forget to subscribe and join our Facebook page in the description below.